Hi, I'm Chandrasekhar and I'm going to present a pragmatic approach to shell scripting. All Unix and Unix-like operating systems like Linux come equipped with shell which is compatible with the Bond shell. Modern operating systems like Linux and Mac OS X come with bash installed and configured by default. Well, in this small demonstration, I'm going to explain the power of shell by showing you small examples where how a shell can be used as a glue language for connecting various commands to solve a bigger problem. Now let me give you a very simple example statement here. I have a bunch of files in a directory. ls command will just print all these files and I just want to find out the total size of these files. So most of you would have known ls with minus l switch which will tell you the total size of all the files. No, it will not tell you the total size, sorry. It will tell you the size of each file, right? Each line prints the file name and it also prints the size. Now, I want to calculate the total size. You know, what that means is I want to sum this number with this number with this number all the way till the end. Now, this can be a little challenging for people who are new to shell. A couple of you would expect that, uh, expect ls command should have done that job, but in Unix or in all the Unix-like operating systems, most tools are written in such a way that they do exactly one job. They don't do more than one aspect. ls command only prints information about each file. It does not take care of calculating the total sum and so on. Well, there are tools like du. Some of you would recommend using du command, which stands for disk usage, which will tell you the total usage of disk space for a particular folder. This, while this solves a job for most purposes, this might not be very accurate in telling you exactly the sum of the size of all the files in here. For example, I can have a file which is just about 54 bytes like you see here, but the disk usage of this file is not guaranteed to be 54. Uh, it might take in the border lines of sector sizes. It may be 512 bytes or 1024 bytes or 2 kilobytes. We call them as block size. Most files will take a minimum of block size on the disk. It depends on the file system's implementation. So what du gives you might not be the real picture about total size of all these files. Now let us try to solve this first using an algorithmic solution. Assuming that you know a little bit of shell scripting, one of the ways I can solve this is by using a simple looping construct. What I will do here, there's a command called stat which is installed on most Unixes. Um, Mac OS X and Linux comes with a stat command which will give you a lot of features. For example, I can say stat minus minus format is equal to, I can say percentages. This indicates print the size of any file name. So I can give a file name, you know, I have a file say autofs.conf. It tells you only the file size of autofs.conf. We can confirm that. We just run ls minus l. You can see autofs.conf is uh, 1759 bytes. If I say stat, minus minus format is equal to percentages and say autofs.conf it gives you the same size so you can find out the size of any file by running this particular command it just prints the size value i want to store this in some kind of variable and accumulate it so what i'm going to do is create a variable called size is equal to zero and i say size is equal to zero this is a shell variable you can in fact print it i'll say echo dollar size Next, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to accumulate the size of each file into this particular variable. How am I going to do that? First, I need to iterate over each file. To do that, one of the ways I can use a for loop. I can say for file, I'll say file in, and I can just specify a wildcard telling star. The star will expand all files in the directory. Now, press enter. You can see it prints a secondary shell prompt. In the secondary shell prompt, I'll start off with a block by using do. Do starts a block, done ends a block. Within the do end, I can say, for example, I will just print the file name for now just to show you how the for loop works, right? Or rather, I will run it like this. I'll say stat minus minus format is equal to percentages and say dollar file. So it will print the size of each file. It prints the size of each file, which is here. Now, instead of just printing it, I want to store this into this size. So let me start off again. I just say size is equal to zero for file in star within the do block. I just say size is equal to, I want to store the result of an expression. So to store the result of an expression, I say dollar open parenthesis 
when I use you know when I insert a command within dollar parenthesis the command is executed and the output of the command is returned in the return to a variable on the left hand side so you can just say over here dollar parenthesis expr expr is a command to evaluate arithmetic expressions I want to add two values so what I do here is just, I say dollar of expr add dollar size whose current value is 0 plus the result of stat comment stat minus minus format is equal to percentages and I will just say dollar five now I press enter this will this would complete this uh, particular command okay I made a mistake it's called stat not staff right so let me just finish this and say done now I just try to print the size yes this contains the total size of all the files in the directory this is an algorithmic approach to solve a problem there is also another way to solve it the pragmatic approach I will show you the pragmatic approach first when I don't know many commands the problem with shell is you know there are so many tools and utilities to solve the same same job so you need to know the right tools to solve a problem for now assuming that you do not know all these for loop and addition and so on this looks very algorithmic you could uh, have another approach I'll run ls minus l you can see this is the first field this is the second field this is the third field the fourth and now there's a fifth field I want to extract the fifth field from the output of a command one of the trick is I can say ls minus l pipe cut minus field number 5 the delimiter is space so each field is separated by a space so you extract fields based on the spaces now there's a problem here some of the lines are blank the reason is because when you run ls command some of the fields are separated with more number of spaces some of them have got one space some of them have got three spaces some of them got even four spaces now we need to convert variable number of spaces to a single space so the trick for that would be ls minus l pipe set substitute multiple occurrence of spaces this is a regular expression so i'm not going to go deep into explaining what regular expressions are in this small session but let me tell you this particular expression indicates one or more occurrence of spaces substitute it with a single space and do it globally that means in the same line multiple patterns are substituted identically we run this now you can see the output of ls command looks a little unformatted for our reading but one thing that you observe is there's exactly one space between the staff and 1798, staff and 1759 and so on. Now the output of this, I'll pass it to a command called cut. I'll just say cut minus field 5 minus delimiter space. You can now see it only extracts the size field. Now I need to sum this up. To sum this up, one of the technique is I need to convert this to convert new line separated data to space separated data. One of the ways I could do this is by exploiting or rather abusing a command called exargs. Exargs is used for a different purpose, but one of the uses of exargs is if, it, if, it, if you pass new line separated data, it converts it to space separated data. Now, the output of exargs, again I pass it to a command called set, set is a stream editor, substitute a space with a space plus space globally. Now, this becomes a full-fledged arithmetic expression. I need to evaluate this expression. One of the ways I can evaluate it is, you could just put this entire command, put this entire command in, into an expression, as a part of an expression. Well, this is a pragmatic approach to solve a problem. If you look at this particular example, it teaches you many things. It teaches you about pipes, teaches you about command substitution, teaches you about a couple of commands like ls, set, cut, exarx, how you can exploit all these tools together to solve a problem. A shell is a glue language. We call it glue. Glue's a, glue is used to tie or I can say attach to or more objects. What the shell does is it runs a command. You can exploit the output of that command feed it as an input to another command. Now you can get the output of the second one and so on. We can build filters, we can capture the output. We can, this is how you build a shell script, right? You can also solve this problem in a much better way 
much better way if you just know about another tool known as awk. The last thing I'm going to tell you is that no more tools, more effective you become in the shell. The last example I'm going to show you is I'll just type the same command which is simpler. I will just say awk ls minus l pipe awk. I will just say open single quotes t plus is equal to dollar five. This indicates fifth field of the output of ls command is accumulated to total. In the end, print the total. Well, let me recap. This is using awk. This is without knowing awk. Well, this looks way too complicated. And this is the old school algorithmic method. The one that I showed you above. Let me move back. Yes, this is the old school algorithmic method. Right. So this are, this is the, these are the concepts that you had to tell you about shell. Learn about what you learn from here is that there are many ways to solve a problem in a shell. The pragmatic approach, the algorithmic approach, and for the pragmatic approach, more the number of tools that you know, the more effective you become. Thank you very much. We will see you, see you soon. If you want to know more information about shell scripting or if you have any questions, doubts, please feel free to go to my website. Um, you can post a question in the contact form. Thank you very much.